Um, okay. Yeah, so uh, I guess it'll be yeah, Father Deacon and Nice uh, versus you. Uh, what are, yeah, what are so, we debating? What, what's the topic? I mean, also, I Protestantism uh, versus uh, Orthodoxy. Oh, which is true, I would suppose. All right. Yeah, which one is true? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's easy. Protestantism. Next. Okay. That, was, that was an easy debate. Okay. I'll be- <laughs> I've been refuted. Sorry, guys. Gotta go. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry for the long wait. I didn't know that was quick, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess um, the way we can do this is maybe uh, each one of you gives a small introduction as to uh, who you are and uh, where you're coming from. What is your worldview and background, and uh, also like a sort of small introduction to the argument you're going to put forth. And uh, maybe from that, you know, we, we won't make it as formal. It's just be something informal rather, like a back and forth. Uh, yeah. If it gets too uh, maybe heated or if it gets too uh, kind of uh, disruptive, like uh, we're going to moderate, we're going to have it moderated. So uh, just uh, try not to uh, kind of interrupt each other or over talk each other. Uh, and maybe if, uh, you know, you're allowed to obviously ask questions for clarification and all that. So, so yeah. Uh, anyone, any one of you wants to start? How about we have Matt? Matt the, the you East, go? Well, um, I don't know what I don't know who you are. Uh, what oh, really? So go oh, ahead okay. and I'll respond. So, okay. um, I was raised a Protestant. Um, started from an evangelical background, kind of non-denominational. Um, and then um, became a uh, Lutheran Missouri Synod. And I have studied uh, Roman Catholicism. Um, I got my bachelor's in um, classical liberal arts, great books, school, Thomas Aquinas College, where um, I learned how to argue against Roman Catholics. And um, I also have a master's and PhD in uh, philosophy and um, a degree um, from St. Vladimir Seminary. And uh, I converted from Lutheranism to uh, Eastern Orthodox through my study uh, and also um, was ordained into the clergy. Um, I have been clergy for uh, Father Deacon for four years. So that's a little bit about my background. And I, I teach at the university. Wow, you got a lot of qualifications. I just have a Master of Divinity. I was raised as a uh, basic, as a heathen slime dog pagan, mixed up in the occult, and uh, got tricked into being saved. And um, I'm a five point Calvinist who runs CARM.org, C A R M.org. That's what I do. I, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Nice. Thank you. Well, you know of Carm? Yes, I do. <clears throat> I just didn't know that you were associated with and ran that. So good to know. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, feel free to add anything else. Um, yeah, it's no big deal. So we know so, each other's backgrounds. So I guess uh, we can maybe got that out of the way. Uh, Matt, you want to maybe give... Uh, sort of an intro, or like either one of you can start, uh, I guess, introduce uh, the sort of, I guess, general argument you would have as to why you believe uh, orthodoxy or Protestantism is true, and maybe why Protestantism or orthodoxy is false. Since he went first, I'll, I'll uh, follow up. Um, my last sure. name is, is Slick, for real, my real name, so I'll keep it quick and slick. Um, I have a very, very, very high view of Scripture, and I've studied Orthodoxy, Roman Catholicism, and they fail miserably to uh, adhere to the inspired Word of God. And I'm a five-point Calvinist, and I can defend it very well from Scripture. And the reason uh, that uh, I am is because that's what the Scriptures teach, and I can argue it quite well. And... um, I would go so far as to say that the Eastern Orthodox Church, from what I understand, and, and granted I could misunderstand some things, it's difficult to find out really what they teach because there's different variations and different books that say slightly different things. But soteriologically, they're, they're synergistic. And uh, so I would say that the Eastern Orthodox uh, does not qualify as a true Christian church, and all who adhere to official uh, Eastern Orthodox theology regarding the doctrine of salvation will end up um, being damned. 
This is as far as I understand the soteriological uh, synergistic uh, system. Now, I'm open again to being corrected and say, well, Matt, that's not what we teach. Well, great. I got my notes open and would love to uh, be corrected if that's the case. I mean, you can maybe go through some scriptures at that point. So um, that's what I would say. Thank you, Matt. And so our Eastern Orthodox response is um, to call out the Protestants for um, to cite scripture in the way that you have um, begs the question. Um, first, um, how did you get your scriptures? How are you interpreting them properly? All of which um, argue um, will result either in circular reasoning or appeals um, to a historical um, and various doctrines that ends up becoming um, self-refuting. So that would be uh, argument that you can't simply, if you have not established um, the canonicity of scripture, um, you cannot appeal to scripture to prove the canon, let alone the correct interpretation, and then come back and say that the Orthodox Church does not fit up the scripture. Um, and lastly, we would say that uh, scripture is a product of the Orthodox Church um, and can never be divorced from that. Um, and therefore, um, that critique would be invalid. Just to lay it real kind of quick, um, and then we can go further into details. But that would be a right. general kind of argument. Well, no disrespect, man, but if you have a PhD in philosophy, I'd expect a little bit more precision in your logic than that. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be able to demonstrate why or how we got the Word of God, except to say that the Word of God is inspired by him. And that God in his great sovereignty, Ephesians 1.11, who works all things after the counsel of his will, is certainly capable of, of working history so that his scriptures are uh, before us. As far as hermeneutics go, well, then that's something we can discuss. And I can run some scriptures by you and see how you do. Uh, and then, we can just go to interpret. Right. So what is the word of God? Uh, it's the inspired word of God, the, the Bible that we have. Well, that they, we, we have different Bibles. So that begs the question of... Uh, <clears throat> So you're saying it's it's uh, it's obvious and it's clear, i.e., properly basic, um, what the word of God is, but that's certainly not true, um, either historically um, or even among um, Christian sects. So for you to say that and say that you don't have to provide justification, um, no, I don't. Is, so no, I don't, ex I don't accept your I don't accept your requirement. Do you agree that Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians are inspired scripture? Yeah, but I have different justification for it. So you can't say so what let's say somebody says that well inspired scripture, my canon's only um, the synoptic gospels. And clearly that's a, a product of history, and so that's the word of God. Um, you're gonna ask what's your justification for that no i'm not your argument is going to well then it's it's viciously circular so you can't say that um let's say now i just because i agree so we agree to the 27 books of the new testament it doesn't mean that you're justified in um knowing that those are simply because they're present so unless you're able to have justification of how is that the word of God? Is it listed in book that these are the, the books um, that are included in the canon? Um, well, clearly it doesn't. And so you, you have an ad hoc and unjustified claim to now I'll argue simply because we agree with it. People agree with all kinds of things. The question isn't about what we agree on. It's who has the justification? Because this is really, do you know? It's not a true belief. Somebody could get a lucky guess um, on something. What we're interested in is, um, is your belief true and do you have justification for it? And so that's what I'm calling you out on is that you can't simply say, well, it's there. So that's my justification. I don't agree with you. See, I'm not going to fall into that trap because you know, it, it's a Roman Catholic uh, argument that you're giving. We have to be able to justify <laughs> what the scriptures are. No, I don't. 
So you assert that I have to. What I are the assert, scriptures? I assert that I don't have to. I asked you about the New Testament, and you volunteered that you agree that the 27 books in the New Testament are inspired. Well, let's, great. Say, let's say you were talking to somebody else. Let's say somebody says, I'm not no, talking to somebody else. I'm well, talking then, to you. Then you're, then you're being disingenuous. What I'm trying to no, get No, I'm not. No, 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 no. Don't say I'm disingenuous. You don't know my heart. That's that's an ad hominem kind of an argument here. Okay, let me so what I'm asking phrase. you to do is the, the the issue is we believe that the Bible's true. Right. I can and ask what you. My argument is is you have no justification for that. I don't. So my question isn't. Well, well you well, just said I don't need any justification for it other than sort of well, well, ad hoc. Uh, you're supposed you to. Me? You're supposed to have PhD. In philosophy. Yeah, this is what Not, Matt does. Here he comes with his bullshit. This is what you do every time, Matt. This is why you're terrible. This is why it doesn't work, Matt. You, you're not a this is what we, to the And argument. this is what we do in philosophy. We look for justifications, and we call people out if they simply say that, I don't need a justification. It just is. Um, and All that's right. just the word of God. I'm, so I'm about ready to. I'm about ready to leave. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm gonna be. I'm just gonna. Yeah. Work once he one. hears my voice, he leaves. Because could you just? I'm gonna call him out on this. Could you just shut up for a second? I'm supposed to debate no, Matt, this. I'm not gonna shut up. Okay, I'm supposed to debate this guy, not everybody else. Right? Is that correct? So, yeah. Let's just. Let's let's do. Is it correct? Go ahead. You want me to debate everybody? Then you have to get in line. You got to give questions to somebody, and then I'll have to take a list of the questions, and we can go on till midnight. Let's just uh, let's just keep the go conversation ahead. going between uh, Father Deacon and uh, Matt Slick. Uh, uh, I was invited. I was invited in to debate this one person. That's what I understood. Yeah. That's what I accepted. I'm not going to go for this. A bunch of people are going to gang up stuff. That's fine. It's not going to happen. Just talk to me. It's it's, it's, it's good. Good. So let's go back to the point. So you're saying that um, it just is, and I don't require any justification other than I believe it is the justification. Um, the now reason, in philosophy, that's circular reasoning, and nobody allows for that. So yes, I mean, everybody. You know, everybody has everybody circular reasons. The reason I believe the inspired word of God is true is because of the inner testimony of the Holy Spirit given by the Lord Jesus Christ, and He said in John twenty seven twenty eight. John 10, 27, 28, my sheep hear my voice, and they, I know them, and they follow me. I know the voice of Christ, as you should if you're a true believer. The voice of Christ is the inspired word of God. I don't have any doubts about the word of God. I know that God, in his sovereignty, according to Ephesians 1, 11, is perfectly able to work all things after the counsel of his will. And he worked through the apostate uh, Roman Catholic Church, and even, I would say, uh, some other people, in order to bring about the preservation of his inspired word which you recognize and I recognize consists, at least in the New Testament, of the 27 books. Okay, there you go. Let's say we have a Hindu who actually, and there's Hindus that actually recognize um, the Bible as um, the word of God. Um, so you're telling me that you're not going to call them out and say, well, you don't need to justify that because we all just agree that that's the... Now, first of all, I think that the means how it was produced, okay, the historicity, the life of the church, um, the understanding, all of those are important. You're saying, I don't even need to get into those. And what I'm going to argue is that Calvinism is ahistorical. It matches up with nothing, either in its interpretation, understanding the canon, or the scriptures themselves, to any of the early church whatsoever. Um, and so you're saying, but it's sufficient if I take your book, by the way, um, it's written by our authors and canonized by our saints and councils. And you're saying, I reject that. And because it's there, I can take it, I can take it out. And it's very clear where the scriptures, how they're formed in the context of them um, being read and understood in the liturgy have a liturgy. You reject the councils. You reject almost everything of the early church that produced um, scriptures. And you're saying that my ahistorical and anachronistic um, understanding of scripture is sufficient. I don't have to justify that. I, My friend, I find that a bad argument. Did you hear me say I reject any of the councils or the church fathers? 
Well, let's did you see. hear me say that I did you hear me say you accused me? I did. Did you? Yeah, did you hear did. me say that I reject the, you, you said I reject the church fathers and you said I reject all the councils. Did you hear me say that? And the reason why I did is because you can hear something either explicitly or implicitly. You said you're a, a five point Calvin. Uh, Calvin. Okay, excuse me. Excuse me. Now, you accuse me of rejecting the councils, which I don't do. I reject the Roman Catholic Trent Council. Well, I don't. I, do you do you accept um, do you accept uh, Constantinople, uh, uh, Constantinople I, I, and everything in there? I would have to go through it and refresh my memory to see what is or is not before I said yes or no. Well, wait a minute. You just said you didn't reject it, so you've already given an af affirmation on, it, and now you're you're backing down. You're supposed things. to be logical. I'm serious. I'm not trying to be insulting, but if you have a PhD, you should do better. To not reject is not does not necessarily mean I affirm. You, you need to said, do, you need to well, up, up your game here. I'm serious. You've already made several logic errors. Now you're the one who talked. To, you have a PhD in philosophy. So if you're going to argue logically, you're the one begging the question. You haven't proved anything, and you've made false accusations against I'm me. I'm just asking you questions. I haven't even gotten no. You haven't just, just no. You've made a lot of accusations. You told me you're a five point Calvin. Okay, I know yes, what I am. Calvinists hold about the ecumenical councils. Let's okay. go to the scriptures and let's see if it's in the scriptures. That's well, that my really challenge to you. Let's go. Th this is prior to the scriptures. This is before. So I'm going to ask you. Let's so see what the scripture says. You that you don't, and I want to ask you about Constantinople. Okay, the Council of Constantinople in 381. Constantinople. Okay. Do you, um, as a Calvinist, accept uh, baptismal regeneration? I do not believe that a person is, has to be baptized in order to be saved. I do not believe that water baptism by immersion, okay, sprinkling, you, you, or or pouring regenerates an individual. Then you deny Constantinople um, of 381 <clears throat> Council? If that's, what, if that's what they teach, then that part of it, I certainly reject. So this is prior to scripture. So you say you have a principle Whoa, prior to me. scripture. That's not true. Scripture was written before 381. Yeah, but it's not clear what the scripture was. It was scripture it written neither, before 381. Was it written before yes. 381? You said before scripture. So therefore you're incorrect. It's not before scripture. All right. Well, let me let me just qualify, make a correction on what I said. The argument's the same. Okay. No, it's not. What the scripture was and where it was present is not a principle of doctrine until um, the, the sixth and seventh century. So you say I can go back to and I use script. Now, first of all, whose understanding of scripture? Um, you're committed to the right of private judgment, okay? Um, Who said I know please about. Stop accusing me! It's, please stop well, accusing me! Well, I don't know. You, you told me you're a Calvinist, right? So well, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Confusing. Wait a minute! Me. You keep accusing Does me Calvin of things. Calvin, not have. Hold on! Hold on! Well, I'm just you going on the you... words that you said. No, you're if not. You said you're a, if you're a Calvinist, do you the... believe? <laughs> The traditional Westminster Confession understanding Not all of, of it. Calvin. Okay, Not so. All of it. Now, hold on a sec. Please stop accusing me. You need to ask questions to see if I believe something or affirm something or not. I told you I'm a five pointer. We already agree that 27 books are there. My view is that because you fail, your church fails to stick to the New Testament and the doctrine of salvation. This is why you, mean, you if you, you hold mean, to Matt, what Matt I understand. Slick's, Matt Slick's understanding of <clears throat> which Let's is go. the right of private judgment. So why Let's is Matt go. Slick? Let's why go. Is Matt, why does Matt Slick Let's go to scripture. have the proper, it begs a question. I'm asking a different question. How is it that Matt Slick has the correct interpretation and I tell knows you what. how scripture was I tell you what. and then can actually go against the entire history, all the councils, right? The consensus, the, I'm not saying that you're going to disagree with everything in the council, but what the council is, the authority that they have and the things that you say, you've already admitted that uh, you had directed uh, one and knowing what Excuse I know me. of Calvinism, I think it'll be safe to assume that you Excuse reject me. a lot of the other ones too.
Okay, what you're okay, doing. Okay, so why is, is Matt Slick okay, correct me. in his interpretation of Scripture? I'm correct insofar as it agrees with what the Scripture says. Now, what you're <laughs> okay, doing here, li listen, hold on a sec. What you're doing here is uh, you're, you're, you're soapboxing. You get up and you say something, you accuse, mm -hmm. you move on, you say, this is how it's supposed to be. And you take these long winded breaths and you start pontificating. Now you want well, to say you're that I'm a five okay. point Calvinist. I'm trying Can to I understand. finish my sentences, please? Yes, sir, you may. I'm going to call you on the carpet. I haven't accused you of anything. I'm asking you, you want to see if I have the right interpretation. That means you'll be able to judge my interpretation of Scripture, right? No, right? no not me. I don't have a, I don't have a right of okay. private judgment. We don't hold to that. So you don't know what the what, if I give you some verses and we discuss them, can we can we do that and see what does your church Not tell you? Me is, is, is can cool. we can we see what your church tells you to believe about it? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, good. Let's let's look at two verses. Let's look at two verses. Let's go to the Word. Let's see. You got a Bible in front of you. What version do you use? Uh, so this is going to be the um, New King James that I have right in front of me. I've got other ones. If you um, want the King James, I'm sorry, it was that I didn't hear you. I apologize. The new, so, this one is the New King James. I can go New King it. James, Colossians two thirteen and fourteen. Colossians. 2, 13 and 14. 2, 13, 3, 14. I'm going to give you a chance to speak. Go ahead. Are you, when you're there, you need, I can. You need, you need to get upset. Okay. When you're there, you can read it so everybody can hear what it is. You want me to read it when you were dead in your sins? Read, not... if you would, verses 13 and 14, Colossians 2, 13 and 14. We'll analyze it. Let's see how you do. But that's not my question. I mean, this is a red herring. You're ignoring no, it's my not. question. Uh, <clears throat> you're saying, and I don't grant you that, that we can start from some type of... Um, Common neutral, we can just analyze this without having to justify our can analyze paradigms. It. It. Analyze it. Analyze what the scripture says. What I'm saying is that's a red herring. You mean going my, to wait, wait, wait a second. Going to God's word to see what it wait, says wait, is a red Matt, herring? Matt, just let him explain why it's a red herring before you. Um, uh, I don't just grant that we have either the same paradigm for understanding that or that we have some neutral ground where we can compare. That's why I'm moving not to, and you're taking an evidentialist approach. And I would think that you, you know, given the little I know, and maybe I'm wrong and you can correct me like you have before. I would think that you're against this kind of methodology of evidentialism. What I'm calling now is your paradigm on how your both methodology, um, how you interpret scripture, um, and the principle of justifying that. And you keep moving it, and that's why I'm calling it a red herring, to let's analyze scripture. But I don't grant that. I don't grant that there's this kind of um, neutrality that you and I can, especially without providing any justification for either what is the word of God how you interpret that and the context within history in which it was formed. And so everything I've seen so far, you keep wanting to do these red herrings and get me out to. So nothing can I, now. Can I jump I, I in? Analyze it. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Let's, let's let Matt have a say. This guy is just, he's talking an awful lot, making an awful lot of accusations. And to be fair, he's cut me off numerous times as I've tried to explain myself. If you go to John eleven thirty five, it says Jesus wept. Short verse. Do we need the authority of the church and church fathers to interpret it? Do we need it? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to interpret it. Okay, I reject your historical whatever it is. I reject your Eastern Orthodoxy. I'm going to interpret the idea that Jesus. It says Jesus wept. I'm going to interpret to mean that he was he was crying. He was weeping. 
that there you go. And that's and that's the only thing. So let me tell you a little bit about how philosophy works. So you might be right. Can, can you get certain? In some sense, you are. But each proposition doesn't exist in isolation. And so the very notion of what it means to weep, the context that it has does not exist in isolation, but within the whole framework and web of beliefs. And you're saying that, um, well, we could just both agree on what that, well, in some senses, I like to compare it to, um, can you have overlap um, in different games, baseball and tennis? Well, you can agree that there's a ball, but the very notion of what ball means and how it's interconnected to all the different rules makes a big difference. And that is not commensurate. Okay. Can I just read the context? When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled and said, where have you laid him? You know, Lazarus. And they said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews were saying, see how he loved him? I'm just interpreting that to mean that Jesus, you know, shed tears. He wept. He cried. So am I correct or am I incorrect? Okay. Um, you're correct in that. Now, can I reprobate? Um, on so the then well, I just asked if I was correct. You said I was correct. Did I need the church councils? Did I need ch your church authority to, to interpret that accurately and properly? No. Did I say that you need every single? Now, you Good. made it a, a, a restricted... Okay, but you do need now to let's understand go. the wider context. Okay. The wider context of Jesus weeping? Yeah. Well, what does that mean? Um, it means he was shedding tears. Okay. Um, what does that have to, does that relate to his human nature, to his divine nature? How are the div divine and human nature? Do you see that each in simple interpretation that even on a reprobate could get or a Buddhist could get correct, okay, with a, a reprobate mind, that is connected to so many other issues too. So can you get a kind of general meaning of what we, yeah, but think about uh, what that connotes and all the other things that that's tied to. It gets into a whole Christological issue. Okay? Explain it. I'm not saying that you need the, the, the church for every single simple kind of run of the mill. You're the one talking about this. Go ahead. You can tie in the communicatio idiomatum and the, and the uh, hypothetic union. I'll go ahead. I'm asking you the question. Um, I can explain that, but that's again, going to go off topic. What I'm trying to get you to understand. You brought it up. You said, I just said Jesus wept. You were saying I need, hinting at the idea, oh, I need all this church authority, all this, this history, all these councils. But you know what, Jesus wept. You agreed. He's, he wept. That's what I said. What's the big deal? We don't need all these councils. Now let's go back to Colossians 2, 14. 13, you don't 14. need a council to understand the things that that might imply? <laughs> Is, how do you is know the Christ, how is do you know the right? and, and passable? How do you know the council is right? Well, this is a question. This is an epistemic question, the way that anybody would know. But the question is how do you know the council is right? Question. It's not an epistemic question. We'd know in the exact same way that any other person would know. The question is are councils normatively binding? And is this what Christ set up? And is this, um, does this match history? Okay. Wait, wait. Does Jesus weeping match history? It's you historical. It. It's you, right there in the Gospel not, of John. It's a historical you document. You asked the question about the, the, the councils. Now you're switching. How, no, I asked you. I didn't ask about the council. I said, how do you know the council's correct? That's what I asked. That's, yes. And what I'm saying is the question is not about how do we know that councils are correct. It do is. We know that this is a question that Wait, Christ dude. established this authority. I didn't ask that question. I asked you specifically, and you can't even get the question right. I'm I said, saying how do you own. know? How do you know the councils are right? How do you know? Through the Holy Spirit, the same way that you would know through that this is what Christ established. This is the church of the apostles and their disciples. This is the episcopy that they established. This is the precedent they set. Okay. Um, this matches history. 
And this is the mechanism by which the Holy Spirit, that's the epistemic. Now the question is, now a historical question, does Christ establish a normative body such that their interpretation, so let me correct myself with the Jesus web. Do you need with every single thing somebody to step in and tell you, no, you don't? Does that then follow that you don't need the episcopos and the structure of the church to be a normative body? No, that's false. That doesn't follow. I'm and not talking the, about that. That's what I'm talking. That's the orthodox position. We're comparing the Protestant. I know. And I'm saying that you need a normative body that is established by the apostles, disciples, and, and the bishops. Okay, to know yeah. what Scripture is. That's how it's formed. Okay, what the Word of God is. And the understand on every single thing, of course not. Um, but they just, provide a I, normative interpretation, so that's what I'm saying. The conversation switches to that to analyze that. You know, you you say because a lot. that's going to be a difference between Protestantism. Well, it's it's I can't make a point. I mean, I stop for to let you make a point. You can go. Well, you're you're. You know, you're speaking for long periods. I ask you a simple question. You don't give me a simple answer. By the way, I have a, a, a friend who's a walking quad. He's only like 12 in the entire world. He's Eastern Orthodox. We've had many discussions. I mean, I'm familiar with a lot of what goes on, and you remind me of him. You don't appeal to God's word. You appeal to your church authority, church system, church structure, church history, that church fathers. And that's that what you God's do. Word. Hold on. Hey. This is what you do. I want to go to God's word, directly to God's word, to test to see if you're on the right track. And you don't want to do it. You want to go you to have an man's... Established, you have an you want to go... Hold on. You want to go to man's counsels, man's traditions, man's authority. I say, let's go to God's word. Let's look at God's word. I, and I go to John to uh, John eleven thirty nine, 39, just to test. Jesus wept. You said I was correct. Your implication was that I need all this authority. It has to be church history. You're, not allowed, you're okay. not allowed to say that it's God's word. You have a okay. fallible list of infallible books by fallible men. And you're saying, and I don't have to justify that because you agree for different reasons that it's God's word. It's authoritative and inspired. And I'm just going to borrow from you. And I don't have to justify that. Um, you're not allowed to do that. You have to justify that. God's word, simply barring for my principles because you reject my principles as, in, as me being Eastern Orthodox. So no, you can't say I can go to God's word and look at what God's word is. You don't know what God's word is. You have to borrow from Orthodox principles and then deny them at the same time. And you can't do that. That's self-refuting. So no, I'm not going to grant you that you as a Protestant are able to say what God's word is or how to interpret it while rejecting the principles that tell you what God's word is and how to interpret it from the Eastern Orthodox point of view. So I'm not going there. I don't have to go there. And what you're going to say is I don't need to be justify that. You do need to justify that. So I'm afraid to say anything lest you give me another two-hour monologue after interrupting me. <clears throat> Correct me, guys. If you think I'm interrupting and I'm being rude, you let me know. But I have to make a point. I think I got yeah, that. Yeah, no, you're fine. I mean, I mean uh, uh, a minute, a and I'm gonna, I let you talk. Go ahead. Yeah, this is a back and forth. Uh, you're fine. I mean, uh, if, if the point is uh, – it's long-winded. Um, maybe there can be some interjection, but um, as long as you made your point clear, uh, that's fine. So here's how it is. If I say anything, this guy's going to interrupt and then give a two-minute response to something before I even finish my sentence. So the moderator, whoever it is, needs to step in and say, hey, hold on, be fair. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, you can take a, you can take a, you can also take a few minutes if you want, Matt, to make your point, and then maybe we can have that. Um, My point is, I asked him, for example, how does he know the councils are correct? 
you can't answer. I just want him to, to tell me how he personally knows for a fact that the counselors are, are correct, his Eastern Orthodox counselors and all stuff. How does he know okay. that? So Through the Holy Spirit. Oh, can I answer? Yep, go ahead. We're going to answer the same way that, that you do about Scripture, the Holy Spirit. Um, the mechanism is going to be different because of the Holy Spirit that guides us into all truth. Um, and what we're going to look at is, does this bear a continuity with the teachings of the apostles um, in the early church? And it does. So that's exactly, um, you get a precedent of this in Acts. Um, you get the early councils where it says it seemed good to, um, and all the ecumenical councils, it seemed good to us and the Holy Spirit um, know that Christ established his church and his apostles with a hierarchy of bishops, um, that when they met together as a whole in the Catholicity of the church, that the Holy Spirit was present and guided them into. So I sh to make a long um, answer short, through the Holy Spirit and the mechanism that I just listed out that has both um, historically verified um, within the entire Orthodox or the whole 2000 years of the church that's remained unchanged. That's how we know. Well, you sure beg the question and just read a lot of stuff in there. <clears throat> so how do you know that they're true? Because you said the Holy Spirit, right? And then what you did was you said that the Holy Spirit supports your position, but you gave us a nice interpretation. So can I respond or do you want to go? Go ahead. Well, why not go ahead and respond? Because you're good at the two, three minute responses. I'll, I'll give you, you give a two, three minute response. You can go. So how about, how about uh, how, uh, since Matt, uh, you gave, uh, that was mainly a minute, a minute and a half. So how about we give uh, Father Deacon a minute, a minute and a half to, to get his point across? Thank you. Um, so again, I'm not begging the question. It's not my view. This is accessible to anybody in history. Can we look at the history and the life of the church? How the church was organized, um, the councils that were set, and how that guided into as a normative body for both the canonization of Scripture that's binding upon all Christians and the interpretation of both Scripture and doctrine. That's not something that's presupposed in my view. That's that's something that's universally and publicly accessible. So that was incorrect to say that. How do you know what the history of those churches did was correct? Okay, so we have St. Vincent of Lorenz that says, in deciding these matters, what was believed by all Christians so well, actually, let me ask the question. Are you asking the cause? How do you know what is the cause or the mechanism in which that cause works? I said, how do you way. know? How do you, 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 not the person next to you, not your neighbor, you. How do you know that the history of all these churches and what they did is correct? Well, through the Holy Spirit. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that you're subjecting all of this to your personal understanding by the Holy Spirit working through you? Now you're switching the question of cause and mechanism in which the Holy Spirit works. You said by the Holy Spirit. You said, I said, how do you personally know? You're saying by the Holy Spirit. So that's telling me that you're saying the Holy Spirit is working through you. And that's how you know, because the Holy Spirit is working through you. That's how you know all the history of these churches but and stuff through, is correct through implies mechanism so now you're confusing categories that's why i asked you you asked me by what how do i know by what cause the holy spirit the same as you so you're telling and you me then and then you put in a question about the mechanism through you i didn't say that through me i can i just listed what the mechanism in which the holy spirit works did the holy spirit reveal this to you internally he revealed it to mankind in history, which includes um, all people. That's begging the question. 
To beg the question means you're assuming the thing to be true you're trying to prove. So I ask you how you know the Holy Spirit is working that through these councils, you appeal to the councils. You can't do that. Otherwise, you ballot, you uh, by the laws of logic. The very thing you said about begging the question to begin with. I'm asking you, how do you personally know that those churches did what was correct? I appealed. You're switching the question. No, I'm not. How do you know personally that they're correct? Okay. Uh, how, about, how about let's clarify. Uh, Matt, what question are you asking? And maybe Father Deacon, why is he switching the question? I, I want to know how he knows, by what criteria okay. does he judge that the history, these churches, the councils, what they taught was correct? Okay. And, and Father Deacon, how is he switching the question? How is that a different question? Because he's switched and he's complaining two categories, the cause and then the means by which one affirms that cause or the mechanisms. So I okay. answered the question, it's by the Holy Spirit. We, we all hold that. Now the question okay. then becomes means by which you know that that is the cause and the mechanism. And that's why I attempted to give an answer that... Um, does not beg the question, but is accessible universally to all through history. What has, as St. Vincent Lorenz says, been practiced and preached everywhere in all places at all times? Okay. I'm trying to ask a simple question, and you are just obfuscating. Are, are you, I'm trying to clarify, are you saying that the Holy Spirit bears witness in you that these councils were correct? It, I said it bears witness in history to mankind. Okay, is it that bears successful? witness. Is, 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 Christ, is, this any, is Christ in any way accessible to mankind in history? Did God become part of history, and did he give his teachings in history? And then you ask me, how do I know that? Well, in one sense... I can look at history like anybody else would know that. And you're saying that begs the question. I'm not really clear. Why is it so hard to look at history and see if there's my starting principle, probably like yours, is that God reveals himself to mankind. Okay. And he teaches something. Now we have all these different competing sex claiming this is what he taught one way to test that is is this what all christians believed at all times look at history and i'm going to argue i'm going to go back to my first point that none of your positions I maybe mean, some of them but as the system as a whole does not fit with what christ delivered the saints and the apostles which has been consistently believed in practice at all times. Now, that's not a special hard thing to do to look at history and see is this consistent. And that's what I'm calling you out on. Your doctrines and your interpretation don't match the history, the consistent history of the church. And that's pretty easy for anybody to look at and find out. Go ahead. Um, I asked you. Are you saying that the Holy Spirit bears witness of you, in you, in your heart, in your mind, in you, of the truth of the church councils? That's what I'm asking. I'm asking a simple question, and you are obfuscating. Is it a loaded, is it a loaded question? And does it imply a false dichotomy? That's my question back to you. <clears throat> okay. As opposed to what? Let's um, you know, I've, I've spent, I've been doing this for 40 years, okay? And I've talked to thousands and thousands of people. And right, don't, don't need to do an at home and just address the question, okay? Because yeah. you keep doing this and saying, I'm like the, this person. Can you, uh, can, you let, can you let me speak? Can you let me speak? Yeah, you can speak. Uh, you, uh, you, attack me. Uh, you attack me. You accuse me of several things. I go to respond, you interrupt. I go to respond again, you interrupt. You do this constantly. Yep. I've asked you the same question over and over again. You're not answering the question. What you do I don't is you ask. Can I what ask you, you a question? Have you stopped okay, okay. your wife 
Okay, okay. how about this, my father? Did you, so let me ask you, you can uh, ask any question you, you want. I don't have to, and if you know anything about court of laws, you can object to loaded question, false dichotomy, complex question. So I might specifically not want to answer a question because they're not legitimate questions. Okay, so how about this, um, uh, Matt? Do you accept Father Deacon's assessment that it is a loaded question? No, I just asked him how he knows. He's the one who's telling me all the counsels are true. I'm just asking okay. him, how do you know that? That's all I'm asking. Okay, okay. It's so, a simple so let's question. Ask, okay, how does he okay, know? Why, why wasn't maybe, the maybe let's ask Father Deacon, let's ask Father Deacon why, uh, can you tell us why you think it's a loaded question? Why you think it's an invalid question? Because when I answered Holy Spirit, it wasn't satisfactory. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, then, that, that does satisfy wait, 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 me. Wait, 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 Matt, let's let him answer. Okay, so when you answer Holy Spirit, what, sorry? It didn't seem to be satisfactory because he continued with the question, implying that does it, and then he asked, does he personally, so I wanted him to clarify, um, can the Holy Spirit both personally reveal truth while working through the church and the episcopate. Okay, okay, so that's why I wanted to make sure that it wasn't an either or question or a loaded question to answer. That's all I was, and I, I qualified and said, I don't have to answer just any question. If it ends up, and I didn't accuse you, I said, if it ends up being a loaded or complex question or false dichotomy, I don't have to answer it. That's all I said. Okay, and Matt, do you agree uh, with what Father Deacon said? What I'm going to say is this, um, that when I ask a question, how does he know? He says the Holy Spirit, right? Then what he does is he goes on and on and on and gives me a whole bunch of new information. I say, well, I don't agree with that. And then he says, you didn't agree that I said the Holy Spirit. You see, that's a misrepresentation. The problem here is he doesn't give succinct okay. answers. So if he says the Holy Spirit, I say, I agree. That's how we know people who are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit okay. bears witness of the truth of Christ. It doesn't bear witness yeah. of church councils. So, okay, well, uh, there's, there's maybe, the maybe, false maybe. dichotomy. I, That's exactly I, what I wanted you to say. So I yeah, got yeah, you so on that. Wait. Okay, guys. It's an either or, and that's a false dichotomy. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Uh, maybe that, 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 Matt, do you think that, for example, the the Holy Spirit? Maybe I think the point of Father Deacon is that. Uh, do you agree, Matt, that the Holy Spirit can work through these church councils? Uh, because the church of councils. Of course, I Holy do. Spirit. Of course, right. I okay. do. Okay. Infallibly. Uh, no, they're not inspired. Oh, really? And how would you know that? Because the word of God is, is uh, inspired. The only thing said to be inspired is the word of God. I have to go with maybe scripture. Maybe can go, in the word maybe of God. Can go from there God since I think there's been a whole lot of books are in the word of God. <laughs> uh, and why not the counsel of the word of God? In fact, they start off saying it seemed good to us in the Holy Spirit. Um, there's so? Of the word of God is present. Um, and they claim to be infallible, just like scripture. They claim to be apostolic. Right as as this apostolic secession, so I could equally. Can you show me? Can you show me apostolic? Can you show me in scripture where apostolic succession is is verified? Well, first of all, that begs the question. Um, you mean but, wait a second? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. When okay. Satan tempted Eve, I mean Eve. When Satan tempted Jesus, he responded with scripture. Now I'm not calling you Satan. I'm just saying he responded with scripture. I'm asking you, show me this. You said apostolic succession. I'm just saying, show me in the Bible. Is that the only Is that the only way? And if it's not in the Bible, is it not true? That's my question back to you. I didn't say if it's not in the Bible, it's not true. Because I can uh, drive my mm -hmm. car on the right-hand side of the road. It's not in the Bible. doesn't mean it's not true. So you're misrepresenting the issue. I'm asking you to show me apostolic authority from Jesus in the New Testament. You made this claim that your history, your church has apostolic authority. Great. That's a claim you yeah. made. Now demonstrate that the claim is true. If you go to those councils to say that the councils say, hey, look, we're the councils. We have authority. How do we know we have authority? Because we said so. That's begging the question. Not acceptable. The inspired word of God, which we know is inspired, which Jesus gave to the apostles, which Jesus, by the power of the I Holy Spirit, that. worked into. Okay, okay. I guess, I, I guess, just, I guess I'm not supposed to talk, am I? I guess I'm not supposed to talk, right? Go well, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
Just do whatever you want. No, go ahead. I'll finish your point. Well, we'll so yeah, finish your point if you want, Matt. It's fine. Uh, uh, go ahead, talk. Because this is this is obviously one sided. It's obvious that when I speak, you got to interrupt. But it's obvious. No, so no, no, go, go ahead. ahead. Ma 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 say what you point. want to say. You're not going to hear me no matter what. I ask you for scripture. Give me scripture. And why do I have to do that? I because I'm asking you to give me some, from the, something authoritative, not just your opinion, which you haven't validated as being true. Let me – you know what? Look, you keep interrupting me. And these guys don't call you on it. If I do, they call me on it. This is not fair. You guys need to stop that. You need to listen up. Be fair and be balanced. I asked yeah, you. Okay. I asked you. You show me from the word of God. You're the one claiming that your church has apostolic authority. All right. You made an incredible claim. Now, I want you to prove it. But before you try, you can't go to the councils to prove the councils because we know that they're full of some people were regenerate. Some people were not regenerate. The councils made mistakes. Councils have gone against each other. I could show you the church fathers, how they contradict each other. So you can't go to the councils. They're not inspired. The Bible, you would agree, and I would agree, is inspired. We know that. We know the words of Jesus are inspired. The words of Paul, inspired. Show me from the inspired word that what you're saying is true, that you have apostolic authority. Go ahead. You're not, first of all, you're not allowed to say it's the inspired word of God. You haven't justified that. Um, I can give that. Yes, I can. And so, so how? Because you presuppose that that's the word of God because the books all give you a list of, these are the books and these are all the chapters in here that are the word of God. Show me from the scriptures. Show me. So you don't have to answer that? <laughs> Stop playing games. Show it's me from a, the scriptures. You I'm said the Holy Spirit. I say the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit bore witness in me on the day of my conversion when the very presence of the Holy Spirit himself was there and Jesus himself was there in the incredible power of his presence. How do you know? And that? I knew. I knew it was him, and I knew his word was true from that moment on, from a pagan occultist to converted how, to Christ. How you know and how did you know what books are? And that's the way it is. The Holy Spirit bore witness, just like you said. Now, you're the one telling me. I would agree in principle. That's you're, true. I'm asking. Show me from scripture. Show me from scripture. Show me from I'm scripture. Not, I'm not going to grant you that. Because you're not in a position to say that Scripture is the Word of God inspired simply because I agree. Do you, do you believe I it? Have, because I have. You can't use my principle in my paradigm in my faith to affirm Scripture and then actually say, well, I believe it because I, I'm borrowing your from your faith. No, you I'm not borrowing from your worldview. That. That's, that's not a... I'm not borrowing from your worldview. I reject your worldview. So don't be okay. making this constant mistake that I'm borrowing from your worldview. It's another mistake of many that you've made. I and reject... Me books let me finish. I reject your worldview as, as Eastern Orthodox. I reject the validity of it. Absolutely reject it. Now, the, the way that I know that it's inspired is by the testimony of the Holy Spirit within me. You cannot exegete my experience, my desire, my understanding. That's the way it is. Every time you ask me, I'm going to repeat the same thing. And you can say, I don't accept it. What I'm going to keep doing is saying to you, show me the That's word of I'm God. Asking. Show me in the scriptures your authority. Show me your church has the authority in the word of God. When I talk That's to fine. a Mormon, I don't believe in the Book of Mormon. But I will use the Book of Mormon, 2 Nephi 25, 23. You're saved by grace through faith. That's all you can do. And I'll say, hey, do you believe that? Yeah. Are you doing all you can do? I can use their logic. I can use their references, their worldview against them because their worldview doesn't adhere to the truth. I'm asking you, as I wanted to go to the Word of God, you're the first one who goes away from the Word of God. You go away from it. I go to it. You go to church councils. You go to church history. You go to your sacred church. You want to call it inspired. 
I say, let's go to the word. And you give me a reason why we can't. You give me a reason why we don't go to God's word. I want to go to God's word. You don't want to. I want to go to God's word. You refuse to. Let's go to God's word. You made the statement. You said your church has the apostolic authority. Great. Show me from scripture the authority because I submit to that scripture. I submit to what it says. Now, this is all you got to do to prove yourself true when your church true is to go to the very thing I absolutely believe is inspired as you do. Now, show me from God's inspired word that we both agree is inspired. Show me. But you're missing a more fundamental point. Can't do it, can you? Okay, Acts 6, Ephesians 4, 11. Wait, wait, don't, don't steamroll. Wait, don't steamroll. Let's go look. All right. Acts, the entire book. Okay, so look, you're missing a, a larger point. I can, but I don't want to because then I get Want into to use God's word to establish the truth you, of your position? I'm going to the How? level of a principle. You are not in a position to say that it's God's word. And you go, yes, I, you am, I, am, I am because I'm regenerate, because I'm a believer in Christ Jesus, begging, God begging in flesh. Question. It's begging. Okay. The, you better believe it's begging the question. I love my Lord and my Savior, Jesus. God in flesh who died on the so cross Mormons. and canceled my sin. No, they don't. They believe. I guess you know what Mormon, don't know what Mormonism Mormons teaches. Mormons can make it all the same that, arguments that you do. Mormonism That's teaches like that God came from another planet and has a goddess wife and he has sex with her and makes spirit babies. And Jesus and Lucifer are brothers. When they say Jesus... Because they it doesn't match mean, up with your interpretation of scripture. That's why it goes back to the principle. No, it does. It's not true. Not true. Not know. true. Not true. You are so full of it. You keep right. saying these things and then you want to run on it. I'm not going to let you do it anymore. Now you listen up. Mormonism, as an example, teaches in many, 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 many gods. I can go to Isaiah 43, 10, 44, 6, 44, 8, 45, 5 and quote them to them and tell mm -hmm. them this is only one God. What are you going to tell me? I can't. So I do have that. to do an apologetic message. Are you going to say I'm not done me. talking? Are you going to tell me I can't go to God's word against a Mormon? Are you going to say, Matt, I don't want you to use God's word against a Mormon and try and get him to reject his false doctrine? Are you actually okay, saying I, that I, I shouldn't do that? Or are you I, saying I should? Which is it? Should I do it or should I not do it? Please may, answer that question. May, may I interject for a moment? No, yeah, no, I you do. wait a minute. He has gone gone on for two, three, four minutes at a time. I've been patient. <laughs> and then and then when he does this, when I do it, then you want to stop me? I'm not gonna go with that. No, Please I'm answer my question. Yet. Answer my question. Should I or should I not tackle the Mormon's error with using the word of God? Tell me. No. I should you're not. not in a position okay. to affirm that it's the word of God. So I should so not. You tell me, don't use, Mormon. don't use the word of God against a Mormon. Wow. Who else would not want me to use the word of God against someone in a false religion? Who else would say something like that? Well, you're not even a position. You are a false religion. I know who would say that. So I know who would say that. Satan. Can Mormons, can Satan Mormons would say that. Without? Satan would not want me to use God's word against a Mormon to get him out of his false religion. The wicked twist scripture to their own right. destruction. How do you know so you're not the wicked one? one? How do you know you're not the wicked one? You're the one Ananias. who avoids the word of God. Hold on a minute. Uh, Matt, Ananias, hold on a second, guys. All right, so two things. First, Ananias, are you willing to go through maybe just a couple of passages? Yeah. Yes, if we can come back to the principle. All right, that that's the second point. That's the second point. The second point, Matt. Um, oh, hold, hold on. Actually, Ananias, the second point, Ananias. After we go through a couple passages, uh, are you, w will you then lay down this mechanism that you or this fundamental principle that you have been speaking about? Yes. I would also like to interject just okay. uh, one thing. So, uh, so, so Matt Slick, it seems that your fundamental claim is that uh, the Bible is the only uh, is the only text that is the inspired word of God. Correct? Yes. Okay. So, um, Father Deacon, and do you agree with uh, with Matt Slick when he says that the Bible is the only inspired word of God? No. No. Okay. So uh, maybe that is the distinction that. Um, 
uh, you both need to take into account that uh, it seems that uh, Matt only believes that the Bible is the only inspired word of God and uh, Father Deacon doesn't. So maybe that's, uh, but that that doesn't mean, yep. I don't see how it's um, irrelevant to ask Matt to defend that, first of all, how does he know in the mechanisms by which he knows it's the word of God? And Holy second Spirit of all, that, that it's also, uh, um, okay, that's not the mechanism, right? That would be the cause. Okay, The mechanism so any, is by his her- indwelling me. Okay, any heretic can say that. That's that's why I went. And you asked me, I gave you the answer. Now what do you want me to do? I wanted the second part of the question, the mechanism by which you know that. Every heretic will say, well, the Holy Spirit led me to. Well, here's my answer. Are you ready? Where where is sola scriptura in scripture? Here's my answer. You ready? How do I know? Okay, you want the answer? I'll tell you the answer. Are you ready to actually listen? Mm -hmm. When I was 17, are you going to let me finish? Yeah, go ahead, Matt. Uh, We'll let you. I walked up in front of a church. And I thought I would give God a try, doubting everything about him. By the way, I've carried the body of my son to the grave. I wept that day. May you never have to experience that. When I went up forward, doubting and everything doubting, and I started praying, I might as well give God a try. All I can tell you, and if you ask me how I know, all I can tell you, tell you is I just knew. That's, all, that's my only answer. The Holy Spirit himself came over me with such power that all I could do was throw my face to the ground and in agony of my sin in the presence of incredible holiness, weep in the presence of purity that was overpowering my soul, overpowering my thoughts, overpowering everything, incredible holiness. And I wept. I can still, I'm 63. That happened when I was 17. I can still remember the multicolored fabric through the tears of the light reflecting up into my eyes. I can still see it in the agonizing presence of my sin and the presence of holiness. And then I'm skipping stuff. And then Jesus was to my left, just to my left, back a little bit. Couldn't see him, couldn't touch him. But I remember his awareness. I remember his presence. I remember everything about him. I remember his concern. I remember him being there. How do I know it was him? I don't know how I did. It just was. That's how I knew. It just was him. He considered me. I was waiting, expectant, afraid, hopeful, full of anxiety, full of fear, full of trust, full of awe, full of everything mixed in. And then he stepped into me. And I physically had a sensation of his presence and my sin left. That happened when I was 17, and I've skipped a lot of it, and I wept harder that day than the day I buried my son. The experience of his presence was incredible. I then went to the Bible, and it was the Word of God. It just was. I knew that Christ, in his great sovereignty, had worked through the people who were his people throughout history to bring his word to where it was right there. I knew that he was in control. I knew that he wouldn't make mistakes. And so I trust him. And that's why I believe the word of God is what it is. Just as Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow after me. I'm pointing you to the word of God. You point me to church councils. You follow a different leader than I do. Now, if you want to say, how do I know? I'm just going to tell you, it was him. How do I know it was him? Because it was. How do I know? Because it was. That's as far as we're ever going to get, because that's what happened. I've calmed down quite a bit since I was 17. Now, that's how. Now, you ready to go look at scripture, at God's word? Are you going to avoid the word of God again? And go someplace else in the church history. Well, let's, let's first uh, let uh, Father Deacon. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Matt. Um, let's go first with Father Deacon. His response to how he knows that uh, the, the 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 specific scriptures of the Bible are are the inspired word of God. 
So first of all, I'd say that it seems to me that you appeal to extra scriptural um, principles um, to verify scripture, which you said you don't allow. Um, so this seems to be ad hoc that if I can't appeal to both history, um, I can appeal to scripture, um, but it's not an either or. So this is one reason why I've been trying to reject. You're saying you only have to do scripture and I don't have to justify with scripture. And then when I ask you to do, you appeal to uh, something that's not sola scriptura, um, some type of extra biblical um, principle of experience to actually verify that. I would say um, it's through scripture, history, um, and the councils, the life of the church, and the Holy Spirit. So one of the reasons why I've been reluctant to answer your questions in the way that you frame them, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, they appear to be framed um, in a dichotomy. Is it either this or that? You either have to go to scripture, and that's the only way. I reject the way that that's framed. And, and I, so you're suggesting it's a false dichotomy? It's a false dichotomy. Okay, now I've given you, I, I've tried not to accuse you of that and give you a chance of, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but it seems to me when you're saying you can only go to scripture because um, that's the only thing that I assume without justifying, then you did give it, I, I will give it to you, that you did give a chance to try to justify that, but against your own sola scriptura principle by using extra biblical um, evidence and principles, which seems to be um, self-contradictory. Um, I'd say two things that I would critique you on. It does appear that you're making a false, um, framing the questions in a false dichotomy, that you only have to, and that um, the Holy Spirit only can work through speaking through scripture um, and not both and um, and also it's back to, it seems to me that you're begging the question and you also um, seem to refute your own position by saying, um, by appealing to extra biblical standards. Okay, let me respond to that. Yeah. I never said I reject anything not in scripture. You accuse me of that. I never said it. I don't uh, deny extra bit. I do not deny extra biblical principles or evidences. I just check them and compare them with scripture, even the church councils. I did not say that the Holy Spirit can only work through scripture. So you, you, you keep accusing me of things. You don't ask me. Now, can we okay, go to the so scripture guess, now? Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess uh, well, just one more clarification. Yeah, so Matt, you make, to... a you make a distinction between uh, inspired word of God and the Holy Spirit working through whatever like either councils or history you make that distinction the inspired word of god is intended to be inscripturated as that which is being infallible in and of itself god working through church councils and histories is not infallible not intended to be inscripturated okay so like okay so just to be clear there's a distinction between the holy spirit working through uh, scripture and the holy spirit working through other means right Correct. The Holy Spirit can work through all kinds of means, but we judge okay. the truth of it by God's word. Infallibly by other means? When you say infallibly, you're not defining what you mean in some context. I, when I prophesied once, which did happen, and it all came to pass, it was a detailed prophecy. Is that inspired? Is it infallible? Does it belong in the canon? Of course not. In 1 Corinthians 14, people prophesied, spoke in tongues, interpreted tongues. It doesn't mean it was inscripturated. So you say that's infallible. So that's different. I didn't say it was infallible. I'm just saying what happened. No, poss possibly. Is it even in the No, category? I'm not going to say, no, 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 no. I don't say it's infallible. The word of God is infallible. You do know what that means, right? Yeah. Is, well, I, I reject that the only word of God would be um, the scriptures. So we, Can we go we to the scriptures? Yeah, how about no, we, uh, we Yes. How about we Okay, go let's let's cuz if yeah, we're not going to get I've so tried to answer your that. questions, endure your lengthy answers and your avoidance of God's word. I want to get to God's word. My sheep hear my voice 
and they follow after me. Trying to get you to die. Are you there? Yeah, you're cutting out. Go ahead. Are you there? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you. Are you there? Okay. I can hear you. Okay, good. You can hear me. Good. Go ahead. You can we go out. to? Go ahead. Go ahead. Can we go to God's word? Yeah, but the pr- okay. Can we go to God's word? Can we look at scripture? Can we consider what God's word says? No, because or, I don't grant, I can, but I want to make it clear that you still are not allowing you to actually call it God's word by appealing to, by your own principles that you appealed to. Um, and by the way, we have a name for that, that experience that you have. It's called spiritual delusion, prelist. So that doesn't, because I have an experience that the Orthodox Church and everything they said through the Holy Spirit was full in its its entirety. Well, you're obviously um, on your way to hell, that's for sure. And how do well, I know? Do you see, because of scripture. Let's go to scripture. Because I'm that's not going to. Scripture. No, scripture. because scripture doesn't say that it's the pillar and ground. Of, uh, Can we go to God's it word? Says, well, what's God's word? And what's only God's word? This Can is we what I'm go trying to? to get. No, not if it's not clear that we have the same understanding and same principle and same justification. This obfuscates, right? This is the methodology that you're used to, and you're forcing somebody in by your own rules. And what I'm calling out in my apologetics is the principle and justification of your own rules. And you're saying, you're just ignoring that. Can we go to scripture? Can we? No, we can't. I can, but that's not my apologetic method right now. Okay. Because I'm questioning your principles, and I'm saying that you're setting up the rules of the game and begging the question and saying, I can't call those principles into question. Let's just agree on my terms. I'm not agreeing on your terms. And what debates do and what philosophy is supposed to do is analyze the principles and their justification. And you're telling me I can't do that. Let's just ignore that because we believe in words. Um, we believe in sentences. We believe and we don't believe in the same book for the same principles, the same canon, the same history in ecclesiology. And I'm not going to pr- pretend and it's not going to go anywhere because I know exactly what's going to happen. So the way a debate works is to call into question the principles and the justification for those principles. And you failed to do that. You say I failed. I say I didn't. Can we go to scripture now? I want to know if you're going to look at God's word. No, I'm not going to grant that to you. I mean, is this hard for the rest of you guys to understand what I'm trying to do? You're saying, can we go and play things by my my game, right? That's the Protestant Um, game. And I'm calling out the the questions. Here's the hypocrisy in your position. You say you don't want to play by my game. You only want me to play by yours. That's what you're doing. You only want to do, you know, have a discussion if I do exactly what you want me to do. I've tried to answer you several times in different ways. I've tried to do that. I've talked about how the Holy Spirit can work through church councils. I've talked about how the Holy Spirit can work and bear witness within our hearts. I've talked about the word of God in John 10, 27, 28, where Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. There's a spiritual connection there. I've said that. I've also said that I do not reject the idea that God can work through extra biblical means. I've said this. I've answered you over and over different ways. I keep asking you, let's Go to God's word. You keep finding ways to avoid the word of God. Because it's not agreed upon what the word of God is. Do you agree Colossians is the word of God? Let's agree. Do you agree? I agree. It's agree, right? Okay. Good. Let's go to Colossians. You're not understanding what I'm saying. We can agree that certain things are the word of God, but you have a specific understanding of this is the only word of God. I'm calling that into question. Is that true? How do you know it? And how do you know? And this isn't my rules. This is the simple rules of debate that anybody, 
enters into that you have to defend the principles that you're using to justify your claims. Okay, so I'm going to just interject here real quick. Uh, so, Matt, uh, you want Father Deacon to uh, appeal to the Word of God, which is your standard uh, and foundation for, for everything. Uh, yeah, he's, he wants... Yeah. He's yeah. required of me to uh, to defend everything yeah. I've, I believe about the word, yeah. different ways, which I already said I've done. I've tried okay. different ways. He hasn't even tried to go to okay. the word of God. What's his problem? Because I'm not a so, Protestant, so, and I don't believe in soul scripture. I, we have a different methodology. Then That's whatever. Right. Let's go to Colossians. Why? Okay. Because <laughs> it's the word of God. I want to see what you not say about enough. the word of not God. Enough. So, so Matt, Matt, that. maybe maybe let's just uh, clarify here. Matt, why do you think that Father Deacon, like, what is the like, you know, try to be as charitable as possible? Why do you think that it is that Father Deacon does not want to sort of inquire into the Bible in order to further the argument? I believe it's because he's afraid of the Word of God because he's not regenerate. He's serving a false master, and he wants to go to church history and the Word of Man rather than the Word of God. That's what I believe. And I want to expose it. Let's go to Colossians. Okay. So, Father Deacon, I would just like Father Deacon to answer that. Father Deacon, is it true that you're just afraid of the Word of God, or is it for some other reason? So, obviously, I've gone the route of, I have plenty of scriptures that I can. Now, what's going to happen is two things. That when we get into the things that I actually am going to cite within scripture, Orthodox cite scripture all the time. We're going to get into an exegetical. Well, that's not what that means. That's, you know, this is what right. that means. Then it comes right. back to, again, the principle. Is there a right, a private judgment, or did Christ establish a church? Scripture says, by the way, Jesus didn't give you a Bible. He gave you a church, and the apostles testify to this. It says it is the church that's the pillar and ground of truth, not scripture. Now, scriptures come out of the church, and they're not set in, set in dichotomy. So the reason I can do it, but I don't think it's a wise move, because ultimately it's going to get in every single thing that Protestants debate on, well, my interpretation is right. No, your interpretation is, and it gets in this hermeneutical. So I've chosen not to, not because I'm afraid of scripture, we produced your, the scriptures, right? It was our can. It was our authors that did this. We're not afraid of them. The reason why I don't want to do it, it's not a wise debate move, because ultimately we'll get into hermeneutics of private interpretation, both claiming to have the same cause, then we don't get to, allowed to go into the mechanism, and then you say, I can't actually get in a conversation back, which is going to hinge on, on principles and how we justify them for the scripture. So, it's a debate move, and it's wise. I can do it, but I know exactly where it's going. And you're saying, no, you have to, because I'm saying, I know where it's going to go, and I don't have to do that. I can. I guess I guess we can uh, bracket this discussion of the uh, sort of uh, debate about the first principles, and maybe just uh, would you would you both be okay with that? With just sort of like proceeding to uh, inquire into a few passages and uh, sort of bracketing this discussion for. Another moment. Okay, let me let me reframe a question. Let's do scripture. Um, sure. I want to know how Matt Slick answers, you know, in um, John 21, 25, where it tells us that the deeds and, and teachings of Christ um, weren't even all recorded. In fact, it's, it seems to suggest the majority of it. For if they were all written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Now we could say, well, we just, we don't know because it's not. Uh, but St. Paul tells us in Thessalonians, you're to hold fast to the, and stand fast and hold those traditions, which were taught to you either by word of mouth or written. And we have plenty of other verses in the Thessalonians and, and where Paul's talking about the traditions, which I hold fast to those traditions that I've, and, and, to teach those traditions by word of mouth. Okay, so I want to know, well, how do you know what those are? And 
clearly he's making a distinction between what's recorded and what's passed on orally. And second of all, I'm going to ask, you know, on what principle and how would you know that all the teachings would have to, or the essential ones, be recorded and, and scripture? Where do you get that? So there's a move to go to scripture, and I'd like to see how you answer that. I just want to go look at the scriptures. You keep. I did. Saying, I, to, you, I just went to. Um, um, I went to First Timothy three fifteen. Wait a I minute. gave you um, John twenty one twenty five. But look, and what you First do? Thessalonians two fifteen. Did you not? You, I thought we were going to scripture. What you do is you just cite them, beg the question, and you move on. You don't give any chance for cross examination. Then you say, "See, I went to scripture." I've asked you specifically to go to Colossians and look at some specific verses, and you keep wanting to avoid this. I believe it's because you're afraid. I honestly do believe that. Maybe I'm wrong, but I do believe it. I've seen the same kind of avoidance. Now, hold on a second. And as far as 2 Thessalonians 2 goes, you took it out of context. You don't know the context of the tradition there, or 2 Thessalonians 3, 6. You, You haven't cited the context you don't do any exegesis you just tell what believe whatever the church what fathers tell I, you what, your what church no I no no hold on hold on i'm talking <laughs> you know you are so rude you're so full of it you will just go on and on and on and assume that your position is true and when i ask you to verify it you don't want to i just asked you a question i didn't i'm you. asking uh, hold on i've I asked, asked you, you a to question sh- you asked okay me. i asked you I asked you to go to Colossians 2, 13 and 14. You refused to do it. I asked you to show me from Scripture that the Word of God, excuse me, that uh, your church has the authority. You won't do it. I ask you for these things. You asked me to, to say, why do I believe the Word of God? I have answered it. I've spent time giving you different answers, short ones and long ones. I have tried to answer. No matter what I do, you say, well, you don't have the authority. You don't this. You don't that. You're just doing it. And you, you throw out this stuff. I'm trying to answer you. You don't try and answer me. I want to okay. go to specific verses. I have been okay. saying this over and over again, and you, what you do is avoid it at all costs. Okay. You okay. don't okay. want to go to what uh, I want to go to to take a look at something sure. to see if you can understand the word of God. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to just interject. So to be fair, uh, would you both agree to maybe – each peak pick a verse and then uh, you can cross examine based on the verse that you personally pick or maybe one or two verses, you know, it, it doesn't have to be one, maybe one or two verses. Well, I, I did. Got- I, first of all, I don't have to, and I, for strategic reasons, go to whatever verse that you want. Now I thought we agreed that we could go to scripture and I just wanted to, sure. I pulled some scriptures. You wanted to do that. And I knew that I was going to go exactly where it went, but I asked you a question about it. So now you're saying, I'm not happy with that. And if you don't go to the verse I want to. And no, that's not what I'm saying. Would you stop lying and bearing false witness against me? <laughs> okay. You put words in my mouth. Why are you, you put, so you angry? Twist, you twist my words. You remind you, me of the cultist I've had to deal with over and over again. You twist you so what angry? I say. Wait, wait. You, I get angry at people who twist what I say and lie. Now, I'm asking you to go to something specific. I've been asking you for a long time to go to the word of God. You are the one who doesn't want to do it unless you fly by it through very quickly without looking at anything and then saying, see, this is what I do. See, I showed you the scripture. I I, I didn't say you can't do do anything. I said, let's go to Colossians 2, 13 and 14 and take a look at it together. Let's compare right, it to your right. Eastern Orthodox Church. Let's compare it to your Eastern Orthodox Church. All right. So uh, do we do we both agree to do that? Just uh, each Gosh. pick one or two verses. Each pick one or two verses uh, of your choice, and uh, and then we can cross examine. Uh, sure. Right? Let's try okay. that. Okay. Sure. So, so I have to the, and... the, the Protestant meth- methodology without oh, that please. being justified. And then we have to to argue things on the Protestant. I don't understand why that. Okay, okay, okay. So, 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 look at the wait, word wait, wait. of God, please. No, no, wait, wait, Matt, Matt, Matt. Uh, I, I'm interesting. Why? Uh, so, 
uh, Father Deacon, could you uh, repeat that? Sorry. So you're saying that uh, well, I'm, picking and choosing verses is a Protestant methodology? Well, yeah, it presupposes, again, it goes, okay, what's the Protestant methodology? We go to the Word of God, and that's the sole authority for, and then you've okay. got to do that, and then we'll argue out who has the correct hermeneutic. Well, what about that? Deacon Ananias, Ananias, like we've gone this far already. We've covered quite a bit of territory. I don't see why hermeneutics is is off off territory here. Because it ignores, and I'll do it, okay, but I'm telling you where it's going to go. Okay, Um, sure. I I understand your point, uh, and it's it's a, I would argue it's about the point. It's going to miss more fundamental. Um, questions, okay? Yeah, it, of it, which the hermeneutics are based on. So we can get in hermeneutics, but this is what Protestants do: is they argue at the level of hermeneutics without establishing the principles. They just take it for granted. Okay, so I'll do that if you want. Okay. What is it? Colossians two fourteen. But I'm making a point that you're not justified in either the hermeneutics or calling this the Word of God. Okay, so I, I'll just ask you uh, real quick, Matt. Oh, like before, he 14, agrees, Matt. Is that yeah? He agrees. Uh, so he agrees to um, get into the hermeneutics. But uh, do you agree, maybe, to keep that in mind? Uh, so when you proceed, that he does not agree with this sort of methodology uh, um, because it's it's uh, it's sort of like presupposing a different prin- first principles. I just want to go look at God's word okay so i guess uh, we can just uh i, I, I have a different idea i, I got a new idea guys seriously this might help be helpful how about this let's look at god's word that's a different idea well what if i say god's word is can we go to colossians can, can we, we go, go to, to can we it uh, seems if we reach an impasse, um, and I don't know. Uh, do you guys want well, to sort why of... Does I, I just don't think it's going to because I've gotten an argument. How do you know? With, why with, don't we go look at God's word? What are you afraid of? You are, you are obviously squirming and obviously afraid to go look at God's word. You know that I got something up my sleeve. You better believe I do. I got a verse that just refutes your theology. Let's see if you can understand the word of God. Let's see how good you are with your church history, with your counsel, you, with your do authority. You just see that Let's see. You, you just revealed. Of um, course. Okay. What do you think this is? It's a debate. What do you think? I have an idea, but it hinges on. I, I, I think I know. I think I know. I have fruitful discussion because what it hinges on is going to go back to, but I've got the correct interpretation. I don't need to justify that, right? So we can't. We're going to disagree about the verse. Can we go look. Is, can we is look? There anybody clear? Can like, we look? Doubt that? No, because I don't can we think look? wise. Do Can I we look? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'll do. How about this? How about this? I have an idea. I have an idea. How about this? How about we uh, look at the verse and then whatever uh, whatever back and forth uh, occurs after cross-examining the verse and cross-examining each other, then maybe uh, Father Deacon can make a point about okay, that very ahead. cross-examination. Go ahead. Colossians 2.14, Matt. Okay, what I'm going to do is, since you don't want to go to God's word, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my time, I'm just going to go through Colossians 2, 13 and 14. I'm going to tell you what I understand it to say, okay? And I'm going to show you why the Eastern Orthodox Church is false. Now, this is what the word of God says. When you were dead in your transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive together with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us. He has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. That's a beautiful verse. I love Colossians 2.14. I want to put it on a t-shirt. Having canceled out the certificate of debt, the Greek there is the Greek word kerographon. It only occurs right there. It means a handwritten IOU of legal indebtedness. What's canceled? What some translations say, blotted out, removed, canceled. It's all fine. The certificate of debt, the handwriting of ordinances, one version says. Because it says in verse 13, he, he forgave us all our transgressions, having canceled out the certificate of debt. Now, when is it canceled out? 
consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us. He's taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. I don't think it's exegetically bad to say that he canceled the certificate of debt, having nailed to the cross. And the reason I say that is because that's what the text is saying. It says, having nailed it to the cross. Now, we have two options of what the certificate of debt can refer to. Since the immediate verse before is talking about the forgiveness all of our transgression, a transgression is breaking the law of God. You transgress the law. And 1 John 3, 4 says, sin is breaking the law of God. That's sin he's talking about. Having forgiven us all our transgressions, having canceled out the certificate of debt, debt. Did you know that Jesus said, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that is in heaven. Forgive us our sins in Luke 11, 4. Forgive us our debts in Matthew 12, uh, 3. Because he said, 12, 6, he says, he, Jesus equates sin with legal debt. And our Father, who art in heaven, the two verses, Matthew 6, Luke 11. Matthew 6, 12, Luke 11, 4. He, he says, forgive us our sins, forgive us our debts. Now, Jesus canceled out the certificate of debt, having nailed to the cross. The sin debt's canceled at the cross. Canceled at the cross. If it's canceled, can you go to hell for a debt that doesn't exist anymore? If there's a sin debt there that Jesus canceled at the cross, can you be held responsible for it? No, because it doesn't exist anymore. When did he cancel it? According to the word of God at the cross. Not when you get baptized, not when you do sacraments, and not even when you believe. But when he nailed it to the cross. Now, you say Calvinism's not in the Bible. That's a great verse for limited atonement, that Jesus only bore the sins of the elect. Because if only the elect are the ones who are paid for, that makes sense. Then everybody else, their sins are not paid for. They go to hell because he canceled the sin debt. If you want to say he canceled the sin debt for everybody who ever lived, then you're teaching universalism, which is heresy. But if you want to say he's not teaching universalism, then you require logically limited atonement that Jesus only canceled the sin debt for the elect. If you want to say that the sin debt's canceled only uh, for, for everybody, but it's up to you to believe, no, the validity of the sin debt's canceling is not based upon your belief. That's justification, another topic. So that's what I believe about the text. That's what I believe about the text. Now, tell me, tell me, where am I wrong? And show me from the scriptures right there. No, show see, me. That's, that's exactly, you're presupposing the, your particular understanding of the scriptures and saying you have to show me from the scriptures. Okay, show me now what the I just church- read. from John Chris Awesome um, et al. Um, they don't have the same notions of you. They don't have limited atonement, right? And so going to scripture and you having a new interpretation on the meanings of what debt, canceling out the cross, and it can only be this way. The only way to actually cancel out um, would be this way and not sacraments. Um, is exactly why I drove it back to the principles. So you're not in conformity with anybody in the church on your understanding of that verse. Yeah, I am. Okay. Oh, really? Who? What? What church fathers are? Oh, oh, you said anybody in the church. You didn't say church fathers. Now I oh, I so looked at the word. I'm asking you to well, look. I, I'd like to hold on a uh, sec. I'd like Please to look. see. So you get to go for a, a harangue. And I can't actually answer the point. I don't. I'm still know. catching up with the harangues you've given. Can you look at the scriptures and analyze the scripture? Can you go through and comment on the actual word of God for change? Apart from justifying a paradigm, it's no. It's just so look at the word of God and just. No, there is no just looking at. This is what you've missed in the entire debate. Is that and this is what people do in evidentialist apologetics. Well, let's just look at the evidence. Right. This is what how people enter into debates with atheists. Well, let's just look at the evidence. Evidence. You're, you're looks, afraid of God's word. Okay. You're afraid. You're, you're of God's so afraid word. of God's word. You're afraid to look at God's word and just and just open it up and read it for yourself. You got to submit yourself and drink the the e o so kool aid. Just I can't, look at the. I can't actually look. You're, you're a really mean and nasty person. Okay. I've been patient with you. You can accuse me of interrupting and all these things. But I'm doing a principle debate to call out your principles 
and you're saying I can't do that, then I give you it. And then I want to call that out, that it doesn't match the principles on which the Bible is from. And you ad hominem me? I mean, is yeah, this even f- fruitful? I mean, I think I've made my point, right? And I'm not going to get into a Protestant hermeneutics because it's exactly where I went. And it's going to come back as far as defending your interpretation. It's going to come back to those first principles, which y- you ignore. And I'll end the debate with this, that you've neither justified that it's the word of God, that this is the only infallible word of God. Um, You have not produced either in your interpretation or your defense or lack of defense of principles with anything in history. What have you done? You've simply said, well, the word of God. Well, we'll just go to the word of God. And according to my paradigm, which then imputes my understandings of the concepts of debt and cancellation, you have to accept that. Okay. So, so you lied. You said you'd go to and look at the scriptures. You're not doing it. Okay. So are I you saved right you now? Right. Did I not look at the scriptures? Okay, you haven't? You, oh, look okay, with your okay, eyeballs. Wait, Get in there and execute it. I had it, it, I had it up. It. I had it up uh, reading it while you were going on your harangue. Why don't you okay, about explain this? it? Explain what the certificate of debt is. Explain it. Because this stuff hinges on first principles, and it's a waste of time. I mean, it's this a is waste kind of, of the, time to look at God's word. It's a waste of time when you don't agree on the principles that justify how to interpret God's word, what God's word is. You still haven't established that, right? So your argument here is, let's just turn to God's word, and I don't have to justify that. And the only way I justify that is through some type of experience, which you cannot justify. Just so you know. Just Um, so you know. For all I know, that's demonic. The word of God does not justify itself. God assumes, and the scriptures assume their inspiration and their place of authority. Now, please Examine Colossians 2, verses 13 and 14. Examine the council. I can apply okay, okay. the exact guys, same think, things think, to you. I think we've reached uh, sort of an impasse here. Uh, so uh, would you guys be okay with just giving like sort of a brief conclusion of what you thought uh, the debate uh, was about and uh, how it went uh, for you and just like ahead, closing Matt. remarks about the overall argument that each gave? And, you know, I'm just going to ask you to... Uh, just be charitable, no ad, hom- ad hominems, please. Just to sort of talk about the argument, uh, no uh, character. Thank you. So, Matt, you want to start or Father? No, he can go first. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, do you want me to? About, I mean, I don't mind either way. Uh, how about uh, let's, let's make this fair because, uh, you know, obviously uh, the one who has the last word. Uh, Seems to have a rhetorical advantage. Um, I don't know. Oh, the first uh, shall be last, and the last shall be first. Is that? I'm just passing. Like, is there a way to make this fair? Does anyone? Seb, do you have an idea how to flip a coin? May I, Seb? Do you want to flip 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 a coin? Yeah, sure. All right. Seb is impartial. He doesn't really have a sort of. All right. Who says tails? Uh I'll Matt his heads. Okay, I'll take it. his tails. All right. All right. Heads wins. Matt goes first. All right. Go ahead. I thought that was what heads was. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You can go first. My desire, since I won, is for you to go first. Go ahead. Oh, is, that, is that what it was, guys? Oh, we, who, who, who got the coin flip? Uh, Excuse me, but you don't, don't yeah, tell me. Coin flip. Don't tell me that I'm not interpreting that properly. Go ahead. Yeah. Now, your first principles on that of the interpretation of the coin. I'm I'm just messing. Um, no, I wasn't clear if it's the who got the the win gets to decide who goes, or if that was the first. So, you want me to go first? Is that what the the winner Go ahead. chooses who goes first. Is that correct? Just so I'm, I'm clear on what that meant. Yeah, Did that's win- all I meant. Okay, all right. So, like any debate, you debate with atheists, you don't 
grant your opponent just because you agree, for example, that logic works and it justifies certain things, that without them justifying it. And so this is a principled debate about paradigms and worldviews. Now, the way paradigms and worldviews are analyzed is not piecemeal by agreeing to, well, we all agree to words and logic, but you rise to the level of principles and the justification for those principles. That's why I would not grant Matt, my opponent, who holds a different worldview and faith, even though, like the atheist who might believe in logic, um, we don't use that as the first principle epistemic starting point, but look for the justifications for that. Now, I could have, but I think that's a bad apologetic method. It's not fruitful. Um, and again, at the level of paradigms and faith, you analyze principles and their justification, even if there's things that you hold in common. So I tried to steer the debate into an analysis of that by looking at both the continuity of history of God's people and the church and the church fathers and what was said in scripture as well um, as history, the fathers and the councils to provide the justification for the principles of which we both hold to be true. So debates are about justifications of principles. And what I saw was that Matt wanted to ignore that and redefine how typical debates of worldviews and paradigms proceed by saying, well, let's go to the word of God and I don't have to justify that. So I called that out. Um, and again, it resulted, I gave him the benefit of the doubt and it resulted in a hermeneutics of interpretation and hermeneutics depend on first principles and justifying that. And because Matt was unable to go to that level, he both begged the question um, and was not able to provide any justification for either how he knows what the word of God is or the interpretation or any of the positions they had. So in conclusion, debates are about justification at the principle and paradigm level, and Matt failed to do that. Thank you, Father Deacon. Uh, so Matt's like, uh, <clears throat> want to go ahead, Matt? Sure. Um, there we go. Uh, you failed to demonstrate by any stretch of the imagination how the counsels which you affirm and submit to are true. When you, when I asked you this, you said, "Hey, you know, I appeal to the issue of the Holy Spirit," and you sh quickly added in two minutes of stuff. Now, you complain when I say the Holy Spirit bears witness, or Holy Spirit bears witness to the truth. So when I appeal to the same thing you did, you had a double standard at that point and said, "No, I can't do that." You continually misrepresent me, and you did that quite a bit. For one thing, you said, "I'm an evidentialist." No, I'm a presuppositionalist. You accuse instead of ask, and this is something you got to to work on. Now, when I ask, answered you several times, different ways that I affirm the truth of the Word of God, the internal witness, I said the Holy Spirit works through history and the church to his, to his people. I appealed to Scripture in John 10, 27, 28. I quoted the verse, which you never said was not correct. So I did answer you, even though you said I didn't. You just don't like my answer. And by the way, when you appeal to church history, the church fathers contradict themselves a lot. And go to, go to CARM and look up the church fathers who said you're justified by faith alone. I got the documentation there. I corrected you several times on things, and I kept trying to get you to go to the Word of God. You refuse to seriously look at the Word of God. In passing, you'll give some really quick scriptures, which you take out of context, but you don't give any time for cross-examination particularly in 2 Thessalonians 2.15, the tradition now is handed. You don't even know the eschatological context. You don't even know what that is, and I do. It's because you made it up, read. Matt. It's because you made that up. That's not a real hermeneutical interpretation. These are all your inventions, Matt. You are in your own head. You worship your own idol, your mind. Moderators? This is, not, this is totally disconnected Moderators? from reality. Yeah, Moderators? Are, are you serious? Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. 
Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, Jay, just uh, let Matt finish, and then you can jump in. All right, Matt, that was me imitating Jay for comedic. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. By the way... Sorry about that. Um, Sorry about that, Matt. Just, uh, I, uh, just, Matt, uh, I think it's sometimes funny just to add a little humor to to break things up. Um, I'm yeah, no, absolutely. Sorry, who, who muted Matt? Don't, don't like mute Matt. And you don't even do anything. What is wrong with you? Matt is a humorless who, spirit. Who, who muted Matt? No one mute Matt, please. Uh, you muted me? You mute me? What is with you muted. guys? I don't know if you muted you. You're a baby, that, man. I was, I'm going oh, through with you. You're an effeminate. You guys, woman. no wonder oh, you're man. EO. What? Hey, man, I was, I was, guys, 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 please, guys, please. Uh, oh, let's just wow. let, okay, let's Matt, be, let's be, let's, let's, let's just wow. uh, let Matt finish and then we can have a QA after and Jay and, and Father Deacon and Matt can all jump in. So, Matt, just, uh, sorry about that. Just finish your uh, closing remarks. Sorry. Sorry. About, yeah. Sorry about better that. be. Sorry. Should about not that. have allowed someone to come and attack me who I'm not debating. That is not acceptable. Now, I'm going to continue. I corrected him on several things. I never said that I reject anything not in Scripture. He said I do. I corrected him. It's not the case. I don't deny extra biblical principles or evidences. He said I did. I don't do that. He misrepresented me over and over and over again. I just check everything with Scripture. Now, it's obvious he couldn't exegete his way out of Colossians 2, 13 and 14. He's afraid of that. That's, that's just my opinion. I believe I firmly believe it. I continued to urge him and others to go to the Word of God. And just so you know, the Word of God doesn't defend itself. God does not justify himself or his Word. It just is the truth. This guy violated so many rules of debate and so many rules of logic. I'm surprised he can drive a car. Yeah, that was a bit of a shot. But hey, we're having fun, aren't we? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that, Matt. So, well, that's um, not, Matt, that's not funny because actually it is to me. It's my, it's my well, hermeneutic. I'm actually handicapped and I can't drive a car. So well, I take Okay. That. I have Asperger's. Okay. I have autism. <laughs> I take that personally as an insult. <clears throat> How big uh, so, are you? Uh, guys, uh, I, I guess uh, we can sort of proceed to the Q&A. Uh, guys, uh, for those of you who are you in the uh, voice chat, uh, direct your questions at Jay or uh, Matt Slick or uh, Father Deacon. Hey, Sepp. Uh, yeah. You want to help me sort of gather the questions? Yeah. All right. Hey, so um, just write the questions out in. Yeah. See which one is not being used. Let's uh um, bat cave. Uh, I'm just gonna have to back up here for a bit. Yeah. So like a. <laughs> because the bait's just being used for this. It's just constant text and debate. So. Uh, let's use general. Let's just use general. Okay. Oh, good people in here. So write the questions in general, and uh, I'll just pick as I see them or whatever, uh, whichever one's good. I think it's good, whatever. All right. Let's start with... Uh, Shoot. Uh, uh, it looks like we got our first question to Father Deacon Ananias. Uh, did you just appeal to the Holy Spirit to justify the councils, or did you use more than that? Because that would seem to be a defeater for Matt's argument. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, is Father Deacon uh, unmuted, or oh, maybe he's uh, away? Uh, so I guess we're going to have to ask him when he gets back. Yeah, he appealed to the Holy Spirit just like I did. And when I do it, it's not acceptable. When he does it, it's okay. Okay. Um, uh, Matt, question yeah. for you. Mm-hmm. 
from Dustin Six. So is there anywhere in scripture that has a list of what books belong in scripture? Nope. <clears throat> okay. Um let's see. Here. Well, how about how about we let uh just sort of Jay can maybe Jay contribute to the to the question soon. Jay, you wanna sort of add anything to that? Oh, uh, I think Jay is Jay. Are you muted? No, I'm not muted. No. Oh, okay. Okay. Go ahead. So you want? Yeah. These are, the, these are the questions that Matt can't answer because he just will appeal to Scripture when the debate is about the means that the Holy Spirit uses. Everybody has the same idea that the Holy Spirit guides an individual. It's not in. That's not in dispute. Why don't you the let me try and answer the before you accuse me? The that's what the history. No, I don't need to because I've heard your stupid answers for twenty years. Now. Okay, okay, moderators, can you please get this guy get no. get rid of him? Matt, you're you're a you loser, know. dude. You're a. Sorry, I was having a hard time. Like I kept bounced me out of the, and then it was muted. So, so I yeah, missed I there was some sort of question that was coming in. Wait, wait. Someone, what happened to Jay? He died. Rip. Anyway. Jay, anyway. Jay did you die? <laughs> Jay, uh, are you there? Sorry, what was the question? I was having a hard time. It kept like shooting me out, and then I couldn't get into it was unmuted. So there was some. It was uh, a question to Matt. Oh yeah, it was a question to what Matt. Was question? Then, okay. Uh, well, the first question to you, Father Deacon, was: uh, Did you just appeal to the Holy Spirit to justify the councils, or did you use more than that? Because that would seem to be a defeater for Matt's argument. So Sorry, call me the gunner. Um, sorry, phrase again. Did I refer to the whole, uh, did yeah, I appeal to so the Holy Spirit in the councils? What was that again? Yeah. So did you just, ap just appeal to, so like, meaning did you only appeal to the Holy Spirit to justify the councils or did you use more than that? Because that would seem to be a defeater for Matt's argument. Um, I didn't only, um, however, um, I was actually thinking of bringing that up that on the same methodology that Matt was giving about what he identified the word of God, I could identify the councils and I do is the word of God and the Holy Spirit operates. So everything that Matt said about scripture, I can apply it to the councils, um, which he doesn't believe that is the word of God or the Holy Spirit operates in the same way as scripture. Um, and so the the person that asked that question is correct. I could have gone that route. Now I say the Holy. Spirit, it's not just the councils that the Holy Spirit um, is present and illuminating, uh, but both um, in history and the presence of the church and the consensus of the fathers and the individual, in which there is continuity across all. But that's a good point. That's actually a really good point. Okay, Seth, do you want to take over the next one? Can I respond yeah. to that? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Sorry about that. Yeah. Go ahead, Matt. Yeah, sure. He appealed to the Holy Spirit and church councils. I appealed to the Holy Spirit and church councils. He appealed to truly ch the Holy Spirit, church councils in history, and I appealed to uh, the Holy Spirit, churches, councils, and uh, church history. I also added in the Word of God. I went to John 10, 27 through 28, and Ephesians 1, 11. He didn't add the scriptures. So I, my Matt, argument you missed, is— Matt, you missed the point. So I'm uh, the way that you affirm scripture as being the word of God, I would affirm the councils. Are the councils you, you inspired? Don't, you, yes. yes, the councils they are inspired are. and they're in are, are all their are all their writings inspired? No. No one no one mute Jay, please. Are all their well, writings inspired? I just gotta no. Matt, I just gotta use the restroom real quick. Keep keep going. Are all the councils inspired and inerrant? The ecumenical synods, yes. So there are the ecumenical synods are inspired and inerrant. Correct. How do you know? Because the Holy Spirit leads us to know the truth. How do you know the Holy Spirit leads you to know the truth? Because they're in accord with all the other ecumenical doctrines, all the other testimonies of the saints and the scriptures. You're you're just making an assumption that all the the uh, saints agree. They do. They do. Oh. I can go read them. You have no saints. You have no continuity with history. You're a sectarian. 
Excuse me. You are in a cult. You are not in a church. You invented your own church. Excuse me. You're a goblin, a demon, a boomer tard. All right, I got to move on to the next question. Can we get rid of this guy? Because he sounds like he's... He sounds like he might be demonically oppressed. No, Matt, it's... Let's move on to the next question. Yeah, I'm going to move on to the next question. Uh, The next question is for Matt. Uh, So, Mm -hmm. Matt... Uh, would you mind uh, 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 giving an interpret? Uh, what's your interpretation for Colossians chapter two, verse twelve? Colossians two twelve. <clears throat> I get get to the verse. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised up with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. I love that verse. The verse deals with what's called federal headship. Federal Sorry, headship. Can, can someone stop muting uh, Jay, please? Uh, can someone stop doing that, please? Wow. Boy. Sorry about that. Just keep going on. Matt. Keep Sorry going. about that, Matt. Go ahead. Having been buried with him in baptism, it says in Romans 6 6 that we died with Christ. It says in Romans 6 8, we're crucified with Christ. Here comes the Gnosticism. Here comes Matt with his Gnostic Jay, come interpretation. On. Get come rid of this guy. Jay, Get come on. rid of him. Please, Jay, Jay, let moderators. Him finish. Yeah, let, let him finish. Let, let Matt finish, guys. Come on. Let, let him finish, Jay. Uh, he, you can uh, jump in after. Sorry about that, man. Go ahead. I think you d- muted the wrong person. <laughs> Wait, is Matt muted? I don't know. Matt just stopped talking. Is Matt muted? Yeah, see, I, I don't give, I don't believe Matt deserves respect because this is what Matt does every time. He's 